Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Uh, today we are going to talk about Spark architecture in depth. This is the second video in this series and in the first one we spoke about very basic concepts like driver, executor and different components of Spark architecture but today we will go into a bit more detail on each of those concepts that we discussed in the previous video and we will take an actual example and understand how Spark works. So first of all, let's do a recap of what we saw in the last video. What are the very basic components of Spark architecture? So we have something uh, when we talk about Spark or when we talk about architecture of Spark, there are certain basic components like driver, executor. So driver is the brain or the mastermind of a Spark application. The driver is the one who allocates tasks to the executors and tells them or coordinates and communicates with them when a Spark application is running. Executors are the workhorses which are doing the actual work. So the data gets distributed across executors and the executors are the ones who are actually running uh, all the operations that we have written in the Spark application. There is a cluster manager which is like a Uber or an overall manager who allocates, takes care of managing the cluster, allocating the resources uh, and basically helps the driver for execution. A driver process will have a Spark session. That's the entry point for any Spark application which will run the user code. So that's the recap from our last video. Now let's look into few more things in a bit of detail. So first of all, let's talk about language APIs. When we talk about Spark, what are the different languages that we can use to write Spark code? Now Spark itself has been written in Scala, but when it comes to language APIs that we can use to run Spark code, there are many languages that are supported, Scala, Java, Python, SQL and R. Now Spark, if we want to just talk at a Uber level, Spark has two fundamental set of APIs, unstructured which are low level APIs and higher level structured APIs. So, like I said, Spark is written in Scala, so that's the default language, but that doesn't stop us from writing code in many other different languages. And when we talk about structured APIs, all languages would have similar performance. So it's it won't be a drastic difference you, uh, when we are using Python versus Java versus Scala. So these two broad categories are there uh, of structured and unstructured APIs. Now, when we say Spark language APIs, how would that work? So typically, when we talk about a driver or an executor, they are nothing but they are Java processes that are running on one of the machines in the cluster. So what the driver is doing? Sending work to executors. So when we talk about a language API, we need to understand few things. One, that for any Spark application, there is a Spark session object that is available to the user, which is an entry point to the Spark code that will always be there. When we are using Spark, let's say from Python or R, we don't have to give explicit JVM instructions because there is a JVM where the Spark session is running and that's the driver which sends work to executors, which are again run uh, Java processes that are running on a machine. but when we are writing code in Python or R, we don't have to write explicit JVM instructions. We will just write simply our code in Python or R or any language, supported language. It is Spark's responsibility to translate that code so that it can run on the executor JVMs. So everything is a JVM, your driver, your uh, um, executor, every, for everything there is a JVM. but that translation we need not do. We can simply write the code and Spark will translate it so that it can run on the executor JVMs. So uh, that's how Spark language APIs are structured. Now when we talk about data abstraction in Spark, we always keep hearing about two very common uh, things which is data frames and RDDs. But there are several like, abstractions of data in Spark. These are all the ones like data set, data frame, SQL tables, RDDs. These are all representing distributed collection of data. So the data that we have, we can represent that in any of these forms. These are all different types of abstraction that Spark provides. Some are low level, some are high level abstractions. Like RDD is a low level abstraction versus data set and data frames are high level abstractions. 
but all of these are nothing but distributed collection of data these are like wrappers over the data now let us take an example to understand better what is a data frame and what do we mean when we say a data frame so let's say we write one line of code in scala and i put the same in python so if you write one line saying uh, my range is a variable that you are my range is a data frame that you are creating and what you are doing you are not doing nothing but giving a range of 1000 uh, and you are calling the 2df okay now what it is doing it is just simply creating a data frame which has one column and it has 1000 rows where the value is starting from 0 to 999 because we call the range function so both of these lines of code that are written here in python and scala are doing the same thing creating a data frame in spark which will have 1000 rows and one column so this is nothing but a distributed collection when we run this code on a cluster it's a very simple one liner code to explain what will it do it will create a data frame that data frame will get distributed across the cluster on different executors to execute the code that we have written and how it will happen these 1000 rows may get partitioned to different chunks and sent to multiple executors to achieve parallelism now how that distribution happens which executors are selected is dependent on the driver how it is distributed and the coordination is done but essentially this will create a data frame and it will be distributed across the cluster for execution now since we looked at data frame let's also look at look at transformation in action in the previous video we spoke about the difference between a transformation and action we spoke about lazy evaluation uh, so let us look at what exactly a transformation does versus a action so transformation means in spark the rdd transformations are operations that are executed on an rdd it can result either in a single or a multiple rdd but nothing uh, transformation does not trigger anything unless we encounter an action so it's a lazy evaluation what happens is and each rdd is immutable so when you do a transformation it creates a new rdd without changing the existing rdd it kind of creates a lineage one rdd is there you perform a transformation the next gets created one more transformation next gets created but no uh, actual execution is happening until they encounter a action so if the same uh, number range that we created we do a division by 2 if we do this this will return no output to us it is another transformation that i am doing on a data frame what it will do it will just it's an abstract transformation it is not doing actual execution it is just creating one more rdd where the numbers would be divided by 2 only when i call an action the actual execution will happen which means the transformations are just logical transformation plans for us to trigger any kind of execution or computation spark needs to encounter an action that is why we say that when we write code and we are writing a number of transformations spark does a lazy evaluation it does not do any computation unless and until it encounters an action so when you write this division by 2 this is just creating one more rdd immutable rdd which is uh, based on this operation but only when we say dot count this is an action that's when the execution gets triggered a logical plan was created then a physical plan gets created and then the actual execution happens so this is the exact difference between a transformation and action to understand this better let's look at an example which will clarify all of these concepts of transformation action lazy evaluation and how spark is treating the code that we write so let's take a use case where we have customer data right and we are trying to do some group by some sorting etc on that customer data so let's say we have written this uh, this will create a data frame called customer data what it, spark is doing we are asking spark to read in for the schema we are also telling that the file so let's say there is a csv file called summary.1 this is the csv file kept on this path i am just trying to read that csv file using a data frame 
and i am telling that we spark has to infer the schema as well as there is a header in the csv file so this particular line is instructing spark to read this csv file create a data frame and it knows that there is a header in this file after that what we are doing is we are saying that customer data dot take three which means i am taking the top three rows out of that data frame so if we look internally how spark is executing this is there is a csv file there is a read operation which creates a data frame and then there is a take n now this take n means that it is taking it is just creating an array of multiple rows because the data frame will have multiple rows based on how many rows are there in the csv let's say the csv has 100 rows so data frame gets created with 100 rows which is nothing but an array of these 100 rows and we need to pick up only first three now one more thing to observe here if i say a sort before doing a take instead of customer data dot take if i say customer data i start it and then i do a take three what will happen again the same thing the csv would be read a data frame would be created then sort would be applied another data frame gets created like i said the these rdds are immutable so it is creating one more data frame which is a sorted one and then it is doing a take three so if we look at this whole uh, flow what is happening is two things are there which we need to understand first of all when we do a read it is a narrow transformation in the last video we spoke about narrow transformation which means the data shuffling across the network is not happening we are simply reading the file so that's why it's a narrow transformation the moment we say sort since the data is distributed on the network and it needs to get shuffled or come to one place to get it sorted this is a wide transformation but still both of read and sort are transformations no action is there so no ex actual execution is happening the moment we say take three this is the action that spark encounters and actual execution starts so reading happens sorting happens this is narrow this is wide and then the action gets encountered and actual execution happens so this explains all of the terms that we spoke about let's look at a more complex example now here what we are doing we are grouping the customer data by country we are doing a count on that group by and then we are doing a column renamed we are doing a total of the count and naming that column is underscore total then we are doing a sort on the destination total and limiting it to five so this is a complex um, operation that we are doing there are multiple things that are happening now let us see how spark executes it so first operation is what the csv file which is getting read into a data frame then there is a group by the group by is creating another data frame then there is a sum that is happening which is again another transformation there is no action yet these are all transformations so it keeps on creating new data frames and creating a lineage that is why we say that in spark since the rdds are immutable it creates a lineage so here every transformation is creating a new data frame read group by sum rename a column a sort and a limit all of these are transformations which are creating data frames one after the another only when there is a collect encountered which means there is an action that's when the actual execution happens so this explains to us all of those concepts about immutability of a rdd lazy evolution lazy evaluation the act difference between a transformation as an action and an action now one more thing let's talk about is spark submit so what is a spark submit it's a built-in command line tool spark submits purpose is to send the application code to the cluster and execute it there so whenever we submit a spark job the application will run until it completes or it encounters an error so there are multiple controls that spark submit offers we can specify resources that the application needs as well as how it needs to be run so an example can be when we submit spark we just give the class we give the mode how we want to execute and the jar file which basically is our code so spark submit is nothing but uh, it is the way of sending the application code to the cluster to launch and execute 
so these are some of the terms that i wanted to cover in continuation to the concept that we had discussed last time i hope this clarifies many doubts that you may be having in the next upcoming videos we will look in detail on the structured apis so please like share and subscribe to the channel and uh, keep listening thank you